Hey guys, we're the Hard Time Shaman Podcast, cheering up a bear class of man. And today we are continuing on our Fieldcraft series with Fieldcraft Shelter. Today our reference is ATP 3-50.21 Survival, and we're on the shelter chapter. So, yay! Yay, shelter. Shelter protects you from sun, wind, rain, snow, uh, insect and other critters, the hot, the cold and from enemy observation it is you against the world and shelter is what that buffer is made of so your primary shelter is your clothing your first line of defense is your clothing your clothing needs to keep you dry needs to keep you warm or cool out of the sun and away from bugs insect other critters along that same lines if you're going to wear boots Dude, break those things in before you wear them out in the field. Otherwise, your feet are going to look like you stepped in some freaking nasty stuff, and now you got some blisters. Oh, my gosh. We had a dude in basic mm. who mm. – you remember basic boots, but – Oh, God. They're the horrible. bottom of his foot, the arch of his foot, literally no. the entire – like probably half the pad – Half of the bottom of his foot. Oh my god! Completely sloughed off. Like it was one of those things where you could Bro. see the blood through the boot. I was like, oh, 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 "Oh wow! Oh, that's nightmare fuel. So bad." So how how did you avoid that? I I know how I did, but how did you avoid that? How did I avoid that? Freaking moleskin. When I I threw those suckers on by the like by the pad. Um, so it's just maintenance. So, I mean, we're doing this for nourish purposes, right? But you know, the hot spots. So when you're walking mm -hmm. for a long time, you'll start to feel hot spots in your feet. Stop. Yep. If you're able to stop assess, because those hot spots are your friction points, right? That's where your socks aren't doing their job. That's where your boots aren't doing their job and your feet are paying for it. If you can catch it early, you can squeak by without a blister, but if you've been doing this stuff for a while, you're, you know where your trouble spots are. So uh, I'd say apply moleskin. So moleskin, that's just, uh, it's a fancy tape that has some, you know, some extra padding and some uh, outer friction on it. You cut to size, throw it on, and it adheres to your foot, and it acts as a barrier to, uh, to your socks that will potentially get wet and rub and your boots, which will potentially get wet and rub i've also heard of guys doing duct tape and that i've heard of that working two. that's now just... it doesn't have the padding mm -hmm. and i'm not sure about the adhesive on your skin for a long time because i've done projects where we have to use mm -hmm. a lot of duct tape and where i've been where my thumb has been on the adhesive and i've you know been ripping it over and over and over again it's like rubbed my skin raw so i don't know if that was right. the adhesive or the friction of me constantly changing that out which wouldn't happen if you kept it on one spot, I've not personally tested it, but I've heard of guys doing duct tape. So I that's, just doubled up on my socks. Doubled up. Oh man, that's a that's a risky move. So it got a tight fit, but there was no chance of the boot rubbing against anything. You know what I did? You know what I uh, have done before is put my dress socks underneath my work socks. Yep. Same same principle. Same principle. Yeah. Just doubled up on the socks. The only thing is your socks are going to get wet and then it's not going to matter. You know, if they, you know, well, I, I don't know about you. My feet sweat a lot. So, you know, like I'll mm -hmm. sweat through a pair of socks and then everywhere that's wet, you know, you're, it's like your sock isn't there anymore. You're just rubbing yeah. anyway. No, no. So yeah. I, I get you. Mine don't really sweat nearly that much, but yeah, I get where you're coming from with that. But yeah. that's, that's when the whole adage of stop, take a knee. Drink some water, change, change your, socks. your socks. I was going to say, play. the gold standard is changing your socks. Yes. That, that's 100%. the gold standard. Carry change extra. socks. And, if you know your feet are going to sweat, carry extras. Well, socks. Changing out your socks and then... Um, or boots. And then foot powder. I That That is mm, my secret yep. is I freaking swam foot in, in foot powder back when we would do rucks. I'd, th I'd literally just dump it into my boot before I put it on. I so I'd put I'd layer like I take my socks off I completely do my entire foot in foot powder put my socks on I dump foot powder in my boot put my boot on 
And that's how I survived without without getting tore up. But yeah, if you have it available, great tool. If not, you know, do you have to? <laughs> but yeah, uh, exactly. Whatever that's works what for say. you. Do what you need to do. Um, not your foot, but my the inside of my thighs would chafe really bad. Ooh. Get chub rub. And yeah. yeah, so I would. So what was it called? So you bought chub rub. Mine was like aqua. <laughs> something it was essentially came in like a deodorant container but it was literally just a, uh, you know just it wasn't astroglide was it yeah it was astroglide <laughs> yeah astroglide oh my god but something else oh i would do god. though is i would um, that stuff's been around since the 70s yeah dude uh, and it works it's awesome what i eventually did though was um if i had it on me i would use vaseline or white petroleum jelly mm. on the inside of my thighs. If I didn't, I would use my deodorant on my thighs and oh, did the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Anything, any of those problem areas, like, you know, you have to, you yeah. have to minimize the friction there. Yep. Uh, along with, so we talked about, you know, your clothes need to keep you warm and dry and cool out of the sun away from bugs. So uh, field uniforms, you know, already come with a insect repellent already, you know, imbued in the fabric. You can also buy that and, you know, put that on your clothing. Um, something else I would highly recommend is like the Kiwi fire or not fire, uh, water repellents. Yeah. You know, anything that is, uh, you know, this hydrophobic is freaking money. Mm -hmm. Um, bringing your boots, wool, I'll say wool all the time it is more expensive, but wool, you know, it retains its insulating properties when it's wet. So if you're cold and wet, <laughs> you'll, it'll still keep you warm. You know, it's not going to just it's, lose all of its properties like, you know, like cotton. Cotton, you'll freaking die. Yeah. But we'll actually yeah. be able to keep its its insulation properties. It's antimicrobial. Downside is it's itchy. Not all of it. You can find blends. Mm. You can find types that aren't That's scratchy. True. Um, that is true. But the old school is like the old school army blankets. Yeah, dude, what are you gonna do? Like, it's oh my horrible. god, horrible. Um, yeah, but so antimicrobial. So mm -hmm. underwear, undershirts, socks. You know things that normally like you know cotton will like just suck up all the funk and just you know put you on your butt. Smell so bad. Yeah, wool won't do that. You know it's antimicrobial. Doesn't care. Um, and it's also fire challenge accepted. Uh, return or flame resistant rather. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> On both parts. Dude, go ahead. Like, it's been around, and that's why. It's been around for generations. We know. Like, we know mm -hmm. it does this stuff. That's why it's the best. Like, you go back to the to the old country, well, that's what they use, man. There's a reason why we couldn't see, you know, those good old goat farmers, you know, under our thermals. Oh, God, yeah. You know, it's just, you know, we're... I, I'm telling you right now, we're gonna start seeing people go back to the old stuff. The old, the new stuff's great. New stuff's great, but the old stuff more readily accessible and cheaper, way cheaper. Um, another point. So cotton, yes, it wicks moisture, but it loses about ninety percent of its insulating properties when it's wet. So, yep. What's the what's it can the also be what's the adage? By... Do you remember? Uh, for cotton for kills. Cotton. Yeah, cotton kills. Yeah. Uh, Sounds familiar. Yeah. Regardless, regardless of but the fabric, yeah. your clothing, so the usefulness of your clothing will be degraded by sand, soil, funk, anything. So you have to think of, you know, however your fabric is knitted or woven, whatever. You know, if that gets gunked up by sand or mud or dirt or whatever it's losing the breathability it's getting heavier it's becoming more abrasive it's 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 use mm -hmm. it's losing its worthfulness or is lessening its worth rather it's usefulness oh so how do we take care of that clean your stuff clean your stuff yeah, clean your clothing. It's just like, you know, clean your rifle or your equipment. You know, it's it's upkeep of equipment. So yep. that's why you need to, you know, carry more than one set of clothing out in the field if you're going to be out for an extended period of time. You know, you're 
your clothing is your first line of defense against you know weather against the elements yes uh but your clothing is also the first thing that touches you so your skin is your largest organ in your body and it can only you know take so much stress before it'll start to break down i mean your skin is it's you know yes you can build it up but it is so sensitive if you lay down on the same spot for too long your skin will break down from the weight of just you. It's called a pressure ulcer. Do you do you want me to ruin the rest of your night? I mean, it's almost done. Go for it. We are nothing more than brains running around in a bone, muscle, and skin exosuit. It's an in- interesting secular view. Just think about that. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, like you, like you tried to lean into earlier. How do we care for our clothing? We Get have a the, fancy little mnemonic. We have the mnemonic of colder. Colder. What does it stand for? All right. So colder stands for clean, overheating, loose layers, dry. Examine, repair, clean just means exactly what it sounds like. Keep your clothing clean, not just for hygiene and comfort, but keeping it clean helps to retain the clothing's insulation properties. Overheating. Avoid overheating. So adjust your clothing so you don't sweat, you know, freaking core memory for me every time that we would go out for a platoon run and it was, oh God, you know, what, under... 50 degrees all right take it off there you know because we all have our you know our cold weather oh, stuff yeah. on and we go right back down <sighs> to summer pts just a short sure it'd be 30 degrees and we be down that because when you're running when you're active you're going to heat up you will be warm one way or another mm-hmm. and if you keep up all those layers while you're working while you're sweating that's how you're gonna get hypothermia you're gonna sweat and then that's yes. what's going to cool you down and, you know, not great uh, line of events after that because wet clothing loses insulation. When sweat evaporates, the body cools. That's what sweat is for. So when you're working out in the sun, your body sweats, you get covered in water. That water evaporates, mm-hmm. takes the heat with it. It's the whole body mechanic, it's the whole function, Right. If that happens, thermodynamic properties. Yay. If that happens in twenty degree weather, you're not gonna have oh. a great time. Yeah, so, straight up not having a good time. <laughs> so, oh. uh, something else: your head and your hands act as easy heat disappears when you're overheated. What do I yep. mean by that? I mean, if you're all bundled up and you get hot, take your beanie off. You lose. Oh 80% yeah, and then it's cool because your head. Then you just see the steam coming off of people's heads. You That's literally so so fun so to you watch. literally lose eighty percent of your heat through your head. Yep. So that that goes both ways. So if you're hot, take your cap off. If you're getting really cold, throw a beanie on. Throw a head covering on. Something, mm-hmm. especially with your hands too. Hands growing, armpits, yep. head. You know, it's all where a lot of your heat is going to be concentrated. Yep. So loose layers. What we're talking about this, we mean wear clothing in loose layers. So wear loose clothing and wear it in layers. Let me try this again. Loose layers. We're talking about wearing clothing that's loose and wearing it in layers. Layering allows the air to get trapped and adds insulation value. So like we were talking about in our winter preparedness episode, when you were talking about the homeless guy stuffing newspaper into his jacket – yeah, he's creating that barrier of not only just like an actual physical thing, but also the air. He also trapped in there in between the ridges and everything. It adds as insulation. So as your conditions change, you can either add more layers or you can take them off. So, hey, third, take them off. Well, crap, guess we're going to be cold for about hmm, 15 minutes. So without getting into the whole system, right? So the army has you know all these, you know, the cold weather system, right? The, mm-hmm. you know, first layer obviously being just your normal fatigues, right? But your silkies, right? Your first, 
you know, layering base layer is fitted really loose. So it's moisture wicking material, uh, and it's very loose, you know, to, you know, build up that, uh, you know, that space, right? Mm -hmm. Something else you can see is um, people that are really into hammock camping. They have a kind of an outer, they can have an outer shell that goes around their hammock, and all that does is it just traps a, a insulating bubble of air Oh, cool. Around their, you know, around their sleeping system. And I've seen dudes in that in like 20 degree weather, less, and they're toasty. You know, anything to add that little buffer goes a long, long way. D, dry. So keep your clothing dry. Wet clothing conducts heat away from the body. So, you know, evaboration like we, what we talked about. Um, Promoted dynamic properties. Yeah. Woo Woot woot. Wearing water repellent clothing as an outer layer. So that's your Gore-Tex. That's your frog mm -hmm. dogs. That's your anything that's, uh, you know, hydrophobic. That's what we're talking about here. And then wet clothing can be, you know, just as a, you know, a tip of practice. Wet clothing can be secure on the outside of a rock or a vehicle, you know, as you're moving, as you're drying. Something I used to do is my socks. I used to... Uh, you know, secure my socks to the outside of my salt pack or my ruck or on my belt. And, you know, as we did a movement, then, you know, that would be drying as I went. So I didn't have to worry about that, you know, getting mildew or, you know, taking forever to dry in my, you know, in my pack. I wonder what that smell was. Foul. You know, what was even worse than that was when I threw all of my, uh, you know, all my dairy laundry in the waterproof bag and then forgot about it. Oh, and then when we dude, finally got I did back, that I went to <laughs> clean all my stuff. It, it about knocked me out. I opened it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Foul, foul stench. Foul. Uh, foul. Small damp clothing items can be stored between layers to allow the body to heat and dry the clothing. So something that I used to do when we would bed down is I would always have my my. Uh, not my Gore-Tex. What am I trying to say? Sleep system, water flare. You know what I'm talking. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the baby cover. Baby cover. Thank you. Yeah. So regardless of what the weather was, I always had my baby cover, right? Uh, even if I didn't even bring my summer bag, I had my baby cover. But mm -hmm. something that I would do always. is when we bed down, I would strip down, and then I would either lay out my clothing underneath me, or I would use that as a pillow. And it stayed within my sleep system along with my rifle. And that way my body heat would, you know, dry that clothing. And then whenever I had to get up, I would just dress real quick. So I've done that too, but it made the inside of that baby cover so freaking humid that I just said, screw it, and just left it outside. Well, you need to crack it open. But it would, you know, you have so much uh, condensation in the morning. I had mm -hmm. to, I had to do that. Otherwise all my yeah. stuff would be. You know, and well, so you the just, way I did it, I was, you just got to hang it in the right spot. I, was, I had my poncho over my ruck, and then I had my baby cover and my, you know, in my rifle and my baby cover with me outside mm -hmm. of my sleeping bag, just so it was a just layered away from the water. But, um, and like you said, so, you know, if you keep cores like 550 core or something, then you can, you know, hang up your stuff when you bed exactly. down. Exactly. Keeping in mind, exactly. don't make a freaking gypsy camp so people can you know, see well, where you are and everything, but you know, yeah, be mindful, but you know, yeah, a great, great tool to great tool to use. If you have some extra cord. That's, I mean, that's what I did when we were uh, in the field. Like I'd bed down right next to the striker and then I just string some 550 cord along the, uh, along the underside by the wheels. Oh, it makes just you hang up. You know, your quality stuff of life, there. your quality of life goes up way, way high when you do those yeah, little things, especially if you have the vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, those things are huge. Oh, and then if you're trying to dry by a fire, we never got to camp with a fire. We always did cold camping. But uh, mm -hmm. if you have a fire available, uh, three second rule. So, what I mean by that, you should what be you able to hold your hand at whatever space that you're trying to dry your stuff for three seconds. If that makes sense. Yeah. So if you if you're able to leave your hand there and it not be uncomfortable or hurt, then yeah, that's a good distance to dry your clothing out so that it won't catch fire. Yeah. 
Exactly. Or melt. Good, good story for, yeah, I was going to say a good story from when I was a kid. My dad was elk hunting with a buddy, and he fell asleep with his boots propped up by the fire. Oh, God, you told me about this. Brand new pair of boots. Woke up when the soul was completely melted through onto the rocks. Oh, Not a great time. No. Did he have another pair with him? What do you think? <laughs> oh. It's not a good time. Oh, boy. No. <laughs> he was really mad because his new freaking boots. Brand new pair of boots. Yep. Moving on. E, examine. Uh, so periodically examine your clothing for wear and tear and cleanliness. So uh, something, oh, well, that is listed right after that, this. Repair. So yep, repair. Have, a, have a cleaning and repair kit. With your clothing at all times, something yep. that they had built in whenever we had our, you know, army issued stuff. They had a little patch in the back right pocket. Yes. I think back right pocket. Yes. Just tear it open and Up the pants. You know, there yep. you go. You have a cool adhesive patch. Um, but you, know, you can expand that into a Ziploc bag. So have a couple of those patches, have a, you know, mini sewing kit, have duct tape, and what else? Extra buttons. I'm just trying to think everything that yeah. I had to do in the field. So I've had to I've had to sew my own stuff. I've um, had to use the patches. I've had to rebutton a lot of my own stuff. Something that you can do field expedient is taking the outer cover of a 550 a 550 cord. You can melt that, and it can be used as a as a decent uh, adhesive patch. Shugu. Shugu. Great. But examine, repair, examine. That should be, you know, you should be observing, examining your stuff all the time, regardless. That should be a continual implied task. And then repair if you need to. PCCs, PCIs, folks. Yeah. If you need to fix your stuff, fix your stuff. You should know how to sew. Yep. You should know how to God, sew. Yes, learn how to sew. You should know. Even crappily, you how know. How to sew. Period. Basic stitches. It, it, they're not hard. I'm going to say it right now. If you don't know how to sew, your mom failed you. Also, if you're a grown man, you should know how to sew. And if your dad didn't know, then your dad failed you. So, learn how to sew. And his dad failed him, probably. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Seven from the Hard Time Strongman Podcast here to bring a quick word from our newest sponsor, Blackbeard Firestarters. We first saw Blackbeard Firestarter a few years ago, and after seeing what the product can do, it's been our kit ever since. Their fire starter rope and their fire plugs are windproof, waterproof, dummy proof. They have an insane burn time. And like anything else that they offer, it just works. Besides their fire starters, they offer an arc lighter, ferro rod, stormproof matches, basically anything that you need to get a fire started. To better equip you, we cherry picked their inventory and made our hard time strongman fire kit. Basically our essentials kit for anything that you can need to get a fire started. But besides that, they're offering 10% off anything in their store when you use the code STRONGMEN. We love the guys at Blackbeard Firestarter. We love what they're doing. We trust them and we trust their products. And we honestly can't recommend them enough. Make sure to check them out online at blackbeardfire.com or on Instagram at blackbeardfire. Huge shout out to the guys at Blackbeard Fire for working with us and for bringing the fire. As always, guys, Stay in the fight. Hey everybody, this is 6 and 7 with the Hard Time Strongman Podcast, and we are coming to talk to you about our Patreon and Discord. Hey guys, our patrons get early access to all of our episodes. They get all of our exclusive pre and post shows, all of our spicy takes, all of our rabbit holes that we go on, everything that we want to include in the episode, but we can't because we need to stay on topic. And soon enough, we will be offering digital downloads, guides, everything that we've been working on in the background will soon be available to our patrons. So make sure to check it out. And come hang out with us on Discord. Speaking of the spicy stuff, this is where we discuss most of it. Once you're there, you'll get access to all of our in-depth discussions, including stuff like homesteading, fieldcraft, medical, camping, communications, shooting. You like ARs? Come talk to us about it. You like four by four vehicles and prepping come talk to us about it 
You like Tannerite, Thermite, Napalm? Come talk to us about it. all of the campfire talks that would get us kicked off of other platforms. It's right there in our Discord. Come join our community. We're active on Discord every day. We're interacting with members constantly. We have guys from every walks of life coming to contribute their expertise to all of these various fields and subjects that we've been talking about. Come join the watch the Discord. Come join the Discord. Join our community. Build up that better class of man. Now back to the episode. So, shelter considerations. Your environment is definitely going to dictate the shelter needed. Shelter created... The shelter you create needs to justify the time and the energy cost. This, folks, this takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to properly create a shelter. Calories. This... Yes. This may differ from just survival versus long-term camping. Like if you're out there actually building a freaking like, Hey, my name is, I can't remember the guy's name, but the freaking Marine sniper from alone who oh, basically yeah, yeah. like created a freaking stone fireplace. A in literal his shelter. cottage. The man created a yeah, cottage. He created a in house. Alaska. He built a house. He built a freaking house in Alaska. No, I hear what you're saying, though. Context matters. Context matters. Yes, context right, so matters. If you're in an operational context <laughs> doing it's, hood rat yeah. stuff with your hood rat friends, your shelter <laughs> is going to look a lot different than if you're a, a, a dad and you know, your kid going out you know, cold camping for the weekend. Or right. you're you know, going to have to take into in consideration concealment. You know, everything, you know, context matters in everything, obviously, right? But right. your environment, your, you know, your weather, your time of year, your climate, you know, your Do geographical everything. location, everything dictates, you know, what yep. that shelter needs to look like to, you know, to stack the odds in your favor. Uh, that goes into your site selection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So operational yep. context, does it provide concealment? Everything else, do you have elemental protection from wind, from rain, from... You know, the sun being down sun. on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what about insects? Are you bedding down on a freaking fire ant colony? Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> are you in a natural, are you in a natural line of drift or are you on a natural game trail? You know, do you have, you know, leaves of three hanging out everywhere where you're trying to camp down at? Okay. Are you, are you bedding down in some animals freaking den? Like, yeah. <laughs> to, Bad refer time. Referencing alone again, dude. I think first season, first episode got dropped off and he's like, oh crap, you know, there's a lot of scat around here. You know, he's going, trying to find a good place to bed down because he's starting to get freaked out because he's seeing a lot of mark, you know, bear marks, you know, scat, cuts on trees and everything. Mm -hmm. Looks up and he sees mama with a bunch of cubs in the trees. It's like, nope. <laughs> and he quit first day because, you know, what a horrible place to be dropped off at. Right. I but, mean, the producers screwed him on that one. They should have done a better so there, was a, there wasn't a lot of safety considerations there. Um, escape routes. So not just from, mm -hmm. you know, dramatic Hollywood stuff, but, you know, say you have a fire or, you know, you right. have a fat, flat, blah, 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 blah. words are hard. Flash flood. Flash flood. Or, you know, anything else that could cause you to have to leave your shelter, right? What does that look like? Uh I mean, just safety considerations. All right. Are you oh, surrounded God. by widow makers? <laughs> you know, like the, your situation. He doesn't awareness. mean the spiders, folks. No, dead trees. Yes. Sorry. Old slang. Um, but also spiders. Also spiders. But yeah, um, no, your situational awareness, you actually being able to observe and make a decent, you know, gut call on an area based off of your observations and your prior knowledge is huge in this. Right. That's going to, you know, your site selection is going to lead into your construction of your shelter. Right. So right. is this going to be mainly a natural type of shelter? Is this going to be mostly, you know, out of man-made materials? So you can use like natural walls, fallen trees, uh, large boulders, uh, those, you know, sort of, those sort of things can be used as heat reflectors. If you have fire, you can screen from elements like, you know, wind or 
or rain, you know, if you have a little outcropping, you know, also be in mind that you're not the only wild thing out there. And, you know, right. like you said earlier, you could be stumbling up on, you know, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So you could be stumbling up on, you know, a den or, you know, whatever. Also, if you're going to be the one using fire, make sure that you have good ventilation for wherever you decide to set up camp. Yeah, otherwise you're going to deal with some carbon monoxide poisoning. So that's not fun. Ever. Ever. Not that you'd know because you'd be asleep and dead before, you know, you really realized it. You get the good sleep. Hmm. The permanent kind. <laughs> I, was, I just wanted to, to throw in too. So we talk about, you know, alone. I think it was that same season or maybe it was like season two. But me and wife got so frustrated because there was this one guy that literally took forever. Like it was almost the end of the season before he ended up having to quit because he never got around to finishing his shelter. Oh, like, God. And he was building, like, a legit log cabin. Like, he was, you know, cutting those rounds, everything, everything fit exactly. Like, it was going to be great, but his priority of work sucked. <laughs> like, yep. He took, I think I remember that one. Yeah, like he took forever. It never got finished because he eventually um, he eventually started feeling the effects of malnutrition. So like he was walking, his legs just gave out on him and he couldn't continue. Mm -hmm. But you know, this guy was trying to be, build this whole huge grandiose shelter. He's like, oh man, we're going to have a really hard winter. I need to make this thing you know, perfect. And you know, he was so hyper-focused on that. He had such television on that. He didn't completes other priorities of work it's better yep, to have something that is functional and usable and done than something that is perfect and unfinished correct and one of those things that you can use to make it mostly finished is your insulation good things of insulation include you know pine balls moss leaves basically anything that adds a barrier between you and the ground or you and the elements is going to be good for insulation. Yep. Anything's better than nothing. But if you have the choice, I would go with pine balls. Yeah, I was going to say, you can get those, a lot of square, you know, a lot of volume with those. Yes. That is, that is a huge. Lot. And, you know, I grew up in it. You know, it, it's amazing stuff. It's great. It'll catch like nobody's business. And you get three or four of those, and you have already a decent square footage done. You put that up, you know, a good foot, foot and a half, and, you know, that's got really good insulation value. And it makes really, really, really good mulch. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> also, also make tea with it. It makes pretty good tea. Good vitamin C. Yes. Yes. Actually, not bad. Not bad at all. Mm, I've done the sap, it. The sap can, you know, is a good antiseptic and it, you know, holds, yep. you know, small wounds together. Anyways, focus. Naturally occurring shelters. So, like we talked about, caves. Rock crevasses. Large trees, fallen trees, small outcroppings, depressions. Anything that you can build up and around or through to just kind of carve out something that's going to protect you from the elements, something that can be you know, reasonably used, you know, just keep an eye out for that kind of thing. So uh, top of the shelter is like a, a lean to it, a frame, a, um, oh, what's it called? TP. Yeah. TP. I'm trying to think. It's just like, a, I forget the term for it, but it's basically just uh, where you take just a mass of, you know, stuff, whether it's pine needles or thing, and you basically just layer it on top. And it makes just mm -hmm. kind of like a den type thing, but it's very low, low effort. And, you know, it has really great insulation value because you're just getting so much material mm -hmm. on top of the frame. Uh, but also, you know, like you said, man-made shelters. So A-frames, teepees, hammocks, ponchos, lean-tos, tents, snow caves, tree pits. Igloos. Igloos. <laughs> Uh, raised beds. Oh, a deep, a debris hut. That's what I was trying to say. A debris hut. Yeah, debris hut. Thank um, you. 
you know, you you can go on YouTube and find, you know, however many hundreds of, you know, bushcraft videos on how to make shelters. Oh, dude. That is just a, a skill in and of itself. But I'd say if you know three or four good ways to make shelter and you've got that down pat, you're going to be sitting pretty. You know, you're going to be sitting pretty as far as shelters go. But something else. Find the right way to make these. Find the right way to make these and practice it. Yes. Like you don't have to be able to make them all perfectly, but like you said, pick two or three and learn how to make them really, really good. Perfect your art on those, and you should be fine in almost any situation. Yeah. And, well, and just knowing the just knowing the the basics, the principles of it, mm -hmm. right? So all like, of these, you know, are gonna have you know, are are acting as barriers from the outside, from wind, from rain. Mm -hmm. Okay. All of these are going to have some sort of insulation for where you sleep, whether that's up off the ground, whether, you know, it's digging down to get the thermal bear qualities of the earth. You know, all of these have some sort of, you know, they have the same equation in there, just different variables. Yep. Like you want a minimum of six to 12 inches of insulation above you to be able to retain that heat because heat rises. Thank you. Dark Knight rises. <laughs> We should all know that by now, if you've ever seen that. But and you need a uh, yeah, a good rule of, of thumb: twelve inches of insulation below you. Because below you, yes. The Earth will suck all the heat out of you, yep. like nobody's business. Yep, there is a reason why hell is so hot. I'm just kidding. Hell is that was a good one. You 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 reached a little bit. That was pretty good. <laughs> oh man, you did. No, you can cut that part out. That was insulation. Yeah, it goes without say, you know, provide ventilation. There's a reason why you know, all man-made tents are going to have ventilation, right? So if you do too good of a job at retaining, you know, your, your insulation, your then heat. you're going to, you know, smoke yourself out, essentially. Yep. You know, the You've carbon that dioxide is going to build up and you know, you're done. Mm -hmm. That being said, man, do you have anything else for that? Just any... Last episode, I think in the pre-show we talked about a little bit, just had a cool run-in with cold camping with my boy on accident the other day mm -hmm. last weekend yeah but um you know even in you know the easy times and the good times it can you know it's easily reminded that you know what we you know our our comfort level is so fragile you know mm -hmm. especially with things like shelter you know it's you know doctrine for a reason right your your clothing is your first line of defense everything after that is you know trying to protect you from the big bad wolf which is the elements so i don't know did you have a last you one know, on that one you know it's funny we were talking about comfort level the army did a really good job of preparing us us for that because i am still more than comfortable enough to grab a sleeping bag and a baby cover and sleep on the freaking ground mm. my body kind of hates me for it afterwards but he, that was actually probably one of the first things the kit that I went and grabbed was the uh, the three piece sleep system. Yeah, the summer bag, winter bag, and the bivy cover. Well, of course, the stuff stack, but you know, still, like that was one of the first things I grabbed because it's just like, I mean, if it comes down to it, that's my shelter. Yeah. I was Unless say, you have your bad luck where you woke up at <laughs> six inches of water. I was gonna say that is my only non negotiable in any sleep system I have is the bivy cover. A hundred percent. That's my only non-negotiable because it is miserable being wet and cold. There's nothing Correct. like it. Um, and it can also kill you. But like you said, you know, my man, my my standards for a living is so low at this point. I like, know. <laughs> uh, I told you that story early about last weekend where it was like I woke up at what, like two and three in the morning. It was like 40 degrees and. I like I rolled over like threw extra parkers on my kid and then I was like only under the wool blanket but I was like man this sucks I, I like it hasn't been this bad since I was in the army but then thinking about I didn't shiver I wasn't shivering at all I was just like oh man this sucks I've shivered when I was in there so hard that I like threw something out like I like had a muscle yeah. strain I shivered so freaking mm -hmm. hard that I was like sore like yep I've not been that bad ever since like i've had i've had nights where i thought that I was gonna get frostbite like i'm 
I yeah. haven't been nearly that bad in a long, long time. But, you know, that standard, you know, or that, what am I trying to say? Like, that acclimation is still mostly there. Like, my... Still there. Yeah, my, my whole thought process with everything, it's like, oh, man, I've gotten used to so much worse. <laughs> No, it's a really exactly not, not that horrible. Exactly, I'll be all so, right. Like, yeah. For, so anybody who's gone through that same thing in in the army, the marines, or whatever, like if push comes to shove, we can revert back to that. Mm-hmm. It sucks. Admittedly, it sucks, but we can still do it. And it's just like, okay, you know, it's one of those things. Well, well, we'll get through this as long as we can maintain some semblance of sanity through this. So. My papa, he's got a, a saying, we've done so much with so little for so long, we're not qualified to do anything with nothing. Yep. <laughs> yep. And so I mean, hell. even when it was like four years, I was like, well, for one, I'm not shivering. So it, it's not that bad. But two, I'm in this Gucci rooftop tent, like six and a half, seven feet off mm-hmm. the ground. Like I'm... I'm on a foam matches. I'm fine. <laughs> like, yep. No, exa- dude, exactly. Exactly. And you know, it, as I've seen before, and actually I adopted this saying, the army taught me how to be professionally homeless. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. So we are very comfortable with functioning with very minimal things in the wild. Mm-hmm. So, so that's all I got. All right. My last word would say, or I would say, this is like land nav. As much hmm. as we can say on the matter, as many principles as we can give off, and as much knowledge and uh, that's a good point. Not acclimation or uh, just application or stories that we can tell you guys. It will never compare to you going out and living this stuff. Yeah, experience it yourself. Yeah, it will never compare, and you know suffering. Being out in that cold is the best possible teacher. (laughs) Best possible teacher. So I would say, you know, yes, please. You know, I think that our advice is pretty good. Please follow our, you know, our, our guidance, you know, make sure you have good base layers, make sure you have, you know, solid, good clothing and shelters and, you know, the sort of thing in place, but it doesn't matter if you don't go out and do it. So, Get out there and do it. Get there and do it. As always, guys, we're the Hard Time Strongman Podcast. Checking up the Bear Class Man with another Fieldcraft episode on shelter. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. Hey guys, this is 6 and 7 with the Hard Time Strongman Podcast. Wanted to take a second to do a mental health check-in and to tell you all about the 988 Crisis Lifeline. So, the 988 Lifeline is a national network of local crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress 24 hours a day, 7 days a week in the United States. You can reach the Lifeline at 988lifeline.org or you can call or text 988 to get help, to get someone real on the phone. Every struggle is different. Every struggle is hard. But you are not alone in whatever you're going through. As someone who has used the 988 crisis line, I fully recommend that if you're feeling any of those feelings of depression, suicide, hopelessness, Get in touch with them immediately. They will help you. They will listen to you. Once again, guys, you can reach the Lifeline at 988lifeline.org or you can call or text them at 988. As always, guys, stay in the fight. Stay in the fight.